Hello and welcome back to Genshin Impact. Today, I got a video about Yoimir for you. Yeah, she's one of my favorite characters and just today I finally got an upgrade on her build for the first time in I think almost two years at this point. And this is an upgrade that I was hoping to get, that I was trying to get for yeah such a long time. Like I already said, I think it's almost two years, like at least one and a half years I think. Um, because this upgrade finally puts my Yoimiya at 100% crit rate and 200% crit damage. And yeah, there's actually a story behind this because, like I said, I've been uh, trying to get there for a long time, but why? Why exactly did I want my Yoimiya to have 100% crit rate with 200% crit damage? Well, there's a very simple reason. About two years ago, I think, um, I managed to reach this here. 100 to 192. Which at the time was totally crazy to me, like I never expected to even get to 100%. And I know that it's actually a bit overkill, um, that probably like 80-90% would be more than enough, especially since you sometimes get crit cards in the Abyss that give you more crit rate anyway. Um, but it just felt so nice to have 100% crit rate, to never miss any crits. So I decided to keep that build and was like, well, wouldn't it be kind of nice to have 200% crit damage on top of the 100% crit rate, I just need 8 more percent, actually 7.7 .7 more percent, not even 8. That should be possible, right? Yeah, that's what I thought back then, and since then I've been farming the shit out of the Shimenawa domain and putting so many artifacts into the Shimenawa strongbox um, since it got released with Fontaine. It's by far my most farmed artifact set at this point, and I've got so many good Shimenawa pieces, but none of them were the upgrade that I needed for my Yoimiya. Because my Yoimiya build was already so good that, it, it, yeah, getting an upgrade for this just, it seemed impossible at some points, but I kept at it and didn't give up. And yesterday, I finally got the artifact that I needed. So yeah, let's just go over to the artifacts and take a look at how I got to 200% crit damage. And the key was the feather, but first I wanna take a look at the flower. Now this is the flower from my previous build which as you can see has 13.6 crit rate, but only 5.4 crit damage. And this flower was basically one of the biggest obstacles to getting the 100% to 200% crit ratio because of its high crit rate. I needed, like I said, just 7.7 .7 more crit damage, which is one high roll on crit damage, which considering that I only have one low roll on crit damage here, even two middle rolls would suffice on another flower to actually get the crit damage that I need. But maintaining the same crit rate, that was almost impossible. And my other artifacts also had already pretty good stats. So yeah, it was just really difficult to get an upgrade. I was kind of hoping to maybe get a crit rate circlet. Eventually that has like over 20% crit damage, like 25, around 25 I would need, I think. But that never happened. But what did happen yesterday was that I got a new feather, and that was this one. But yeah, at first, yesterday evening, when I wrote this feather, I didn't really see it as the upgrade that it was, um, because I was kind of tired. I was at an anime convention the whole weekend, so I kind of didn't think of this 14% crit rate allowing me to use a flower with less crit rate and more crit damage. But yeah, when I woke up today, I was like, wait a minute, this is exactly what I need. So if I switch this on my Yoimiya and then put a feather on her that has like a little bit less crit rate than the current feather but a lot more crit damage then that should allow me to actually get the desired crit rate and crit damage. And here we are. We maintained the 100% here. And finally got over 200% crit damage. I've been waiting for this for so damn long. And here it finally is. I was literally jumping out of my chair when I saw this. I was like, heck yeah, finally. It happened. And the thing is, I don't even need 200% on her. She was already wrecking everything with just 192%. It was just about my pride at this point. Because I had invested so much into this, it was just sunk cost fallacy, basically. But here it is, I can finally stop farming Shimenawa. And of course, now that I have 200% crit damage, we have to try her out. We have to see how high her damage is now. And it's not just that I have more crit damage now, I also have a little bit more attack than before. Just a tiny little bit, but you know, more is more. 
I mean, the damage is not gonna be that much different from before, but I'm still excited. Also, Yomi is actually probably one of the best characters to have 100% crit rate on if you have C2, which I do, because this increases uh, her pyro damage if she scores a crit. So for my Yomi, that's basically 100% uptime on this constellation. She always just gets this 25% pyro damage bonus for free. And yes, you can see my Yomi is C4. But before anyone calls me a whale again, like on my last few videos, I am just a low spender and I just got lucky on Yoimir. I got all of these constellations when I was actually rolling for four star characters. The first two I got when I was rolling for Kirara. And I got C1 Kirara in the same amount of pulls that it took me to get um, two constellations for Yoimir. And then the exact same thing happened when I rolled for Chefru's, where I got only C1 Chefru's, but in the same amount of pulls I got two Yoimirs. I actually never bailed on Yoimir. Believe it or not. But now that she's C4, I'm probably gonna go all the way and C6 her eventually. In one of the future banners. But yeah, I just wanted to make clear that I'm not a whale. I just got lucky on Yoimir. Yoimir loves me. That's just how it is. But let's uh, take a look at the rest of her build. I already showed all the artifacts. But the weapon is, of course, her signature weapon. The Thundering Pulse. And then the talents. Well, she's triple crowned because she's one of my favorite characters. And also, basically, the character that I've invested the most resin into. You know, otherwise I wouldn't have this. I don't even know the amount of resin that that took, but... Well, it's not just thousands, it's probably tens of thousands of resin invested into this Yoimir build. But it's so worth it, she's so good. And I love her. Well, but now let's just uh, go to Masanori as usual and just completely wreck him with one of my best characters. And you know what, I'm just gonna solo. I don't even need team members. My Yomi is strong enough to just wreck him on her own. Let's go. And first HP bar already gone. Nice try. Nice try. And nice try. Second rotation. And he's dead. <laughs> yeah, very simple, very easy. And you could see that Mayomi, even on her own, even without any supports, does pretty good damage. But you know, the real fun lies in playing her with a bunch of really good supports, so let's do that now. So we actually have several options here. I mean, one of the main ones, of course, is Yelan for the Vaporize, and then also Yunjin for buffing normal attacks. Then Candace is also an option. Um, an often underestimated option, but from my testing and comparing her with Yunjin, I came to the conclusion that Candace can actually buff normal attacks almost as well as Yunjin, as long as they are infused with an element, which they obviously are for Yoimir. I sometimes use Candace instead of Yunjin in my Wave team because that also gives Hydro Resonance with Yelan, which then also increases Yelan's damage, and also Yenfei's shield because I often use them with Yenfei as a shielder. So yeah, Vape Yomir is one option, but another option that I really like, that is possible thanks to a recently released character, is Jeffrey's Overload with like Beidou official as supports, or maybe even Raiden sometimes. Raiden and Yomir actually work so well together, like it's such an underestimated combo, especially now that uh, Jeffrey's is a thing. Because you just get constant overload thanks to Raiden's skill when you use Yomir, and then when Yomir's skill is over you just basically use her burst, which gives an attack buff to the rest of the team when the burst explosions are triggered. And use Raiden in the downtime of Yomir's skill. Their durations add up pretty nicely. Raiden's burst duration and Yomir's skill duration. And yeah, then you just rinse and repeat. It actually works so damn well. I love playing these two together. But yeah, for now let's just go for a classic vape team. And I'm actually gonna use Yunjin and Candice here. Um, usually in the first slot here I would use a healer or shielder. Um, but I don't think we need that for Masanori. So let's just go full damage here. Uh, we don't have Yelan's burst. No, we do. Just use all the bursts. And unleash Yoimir. Oh, 64k wave there, 76k. Nice, 69k, yeah, 80k there, yeah, okay, and he's already dead. <laughs> that was like 5 seconds. Oh my god, oh, I love how strong Yoimir is. Yeah, okay, we got consistently like over 60k waves and then even 80k at the end, that's really good. Like minimal setup, just a bunch of uh, pretty easy to build supports with um, actually free to play weapons, all of them. I can just show real quick. 
my Yelan has a Favonius bow. My Yunjin has this uh, craftable weapon here. Favonius lance would also work, um, but uh, that is on my Shenhe. I think I have actually a second Favonius lance at um, this point. Ah, yeah, well, I put it on my chef rules, right? I forgot about that. But yeah, this works also really well for Yunjin. And then uh, Candace just has a 3 star weapon that is very commonly available. Very easy to get. And, you know, works really well on her because of the HP percentage substat. And also fits her visually. I love this weapon on Candace. And artifacts Candace has Noblesse, Yunjin has Husk and Emblem, and Yelan Emblem. But yeah, so just wanted to show that my supports here are actually kind of free to play. I mean, Yelan is a 5 star, of course. But even as a free-to-play, you can get good 5 stars if you save up Primal Gems, do a lot of exploration and stuff. And Yoimir is also really good, even if you don't have such a crack build as mine. Of course, my Yoimir is now one of the best Yoimirs out there, probably. But even back when I um, had less crit rate and crit damage, I was already like using her in my 36-star abyss runs. I always thought Yoimir was a pretty good character, also very fun to play. I always prefer to over Hutao, for example. Everyone always says Hutao is so much better, but I don't know. Um... I always enjoy Yoimir more and had better experience with Yoimir. Utao just feels too dependent on her C1, which I don't have. Which means my Utao is constantly out of stamina. And that is just not fun. But my Yoimir, even back when she was C0, she was basically wrecking everything. She was and still is my go-to boss killer in the Abyss. Okay, so I actually went to Akasha to take a look at my new Yoimir build and see how high up it actually is on the leaderboards. And yeah, as it turns out, it's actually like still only about rank 2400 or 3100, um, yeah, like top 2%. So there's still like over 2000 Yoimiyas that are stronger than mine. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with top 2%. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over like not being in the top 1%. I'm just happy that I finally have that magical crit rate to crit damage ratio of 100 to 200. That being said, I think this is a good point to end the video. But don't worry if you want to see more about my Yoimir, she's definitely gonna appear in future videos, especially now that I finally got the 100-200% crit rate to crit damage ratio. Definitely gonna continue to use her in the Abyss a lot and in boss battles, so yeah, you're definitely gonna see more of her in the future. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Please leave a like, comment and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, have a nice day.